Welcome to Windfall Edutech Advanced Module. Chapters. Chapter 1, Trading and Settlement Mechanism. Chapter 2, Introduction to Derivatives. Chapter 3, Trading in Derivatives. Chapter 4, Derivative Strategies. Chapter 5, Portfolio Management Services. Chapter 1, Trading and Settlement Mechanism. Trading in Indian Stock Market. How to Trade in Indian Stock Market. Trading in Equity Segment. Intraday Trading. Types of orders, day trading strategies, short sale, clearing and settlement process, trading in Indian stock market. Trading means buying and selling of securities, commodities, goods, or services. There are so many ways in which investors can do stock market trading. Common forms of stock market trading are equity segment, margin trading, and derivative trading. Equity trading can be performed by the owner of the shares, or by an agent authorized to buy and sell on behalf of the shares owner. Proprietary trading or principal trading is buying and selling for the trader's own profit or loss. In this case, the principal is the owner of the shares. Agency trading is buying and selling by an agent, usually a stock broker, on behalf of a client. Agents are paid a commission for performing the trade. How to trade Indian stock market. If you are Indian national residing in India or non-resident Indian then you need to get PAN card. This is mandatory first step to be done so you can be eligible for next step. Many bank branches all over India accept PAN card application forms take up to a month to complete. Subscribe to a trading account with one of the major online brokering houses. Prominent ones are India Bull, India Info Line, Sharecon and Reliance Money. Now major challenge starts is to learn trading. You can read books, join online charting communities, blogs, membership site or get into a mentorship program. Start paper trading the stock market with full diligence as if you are trading real money. Keep track of local economic news and demand supply equations in different sectors of economy. Keep track of government monitor policy decisions and Reserve Bank of India meeting outcomes. Also keep track of major global event and economic conditions. Once you are comfortable with all above steps you can start trading with real money, be diligent about bet size and stop loss point, develop a methodology which suits your personality style and statistically back tested for good risk to reward ratio. Trading in the equity segment. This is the most common form of trading stocks. In equity segment you buy the stocks of the companies through your broker. Once the request from buying the stocks is settled and payment is made the stocks are deposited to the DP account of the investor. Then stocks can be hold or subsequently sold by the investor. The advantage of the equity trading is that there is no time frame for selling the stocks or closing the deal. Investor can always hold the stocks till he wants and then sell it when he thinks is the right time. But the brokerage charge for equity segment is greater than the derivative segment or margin trading. As an investor if you are looking for good returns and do not want to take more risk and if you are ready to hold the stocks for longer period of time, this is the best way for you to invest in the stock market. Intraday trading. Intraday trading refers to opening and closing a position in a security in the same trading day. This can be buying and selling to capitalize on a potential rise in a security's value or shorting and covering the short to capitalize on a potential drop in value. Intraday traders capitalize on small moves in the value of a security by using leverage or margin, which basically means borrowing money. Some of the more commonly day traded financial instruments are stocks, stock options, currencies, and a host of futures contracts such as equity index futures, interest rate futures, and commodity futures. Day trading used to be the preserve of financial firms and professional investors and speculators. Many day traders are bank or investment firm employees working as specialists in equity investment and fund management. Although collectively called day trading, there are many sub-trading styles within day trading. A day trader is not necessarily very active. Depending on one's trading strategy, the number of trades made in a day may vary from one to dozens or more. Some day traders focus on very short or short-term trading, in which a trade may last seconds to a few minutes. 
they buy and sell many times in a day, trading very high volumes daily and therefore receiving big discounts from the brokerage. Some day traders focus only on momentum or trends. They are more patient and wait for a ride on the strong move which may occur on that day. They make far fewer trades than the aforementioned traders. Day traders often borrow money to trade. Since margin interests are typically only charged on overnight balances, the extra costs discourage them from holding positions overnight. Due to nature of financial leverage and the rapid returns that are possible, day trading can be either extremely profitable or extremely unprofitable, and high-risk profile traders can generate either huge percentage returns or huge percentage losses. Many day traders manage to earn millions per year solely by day trading. Because of the high profits and losses that day trading makes possible, these traders are sometimes portrayed as bandits or gamblers by other investors. Some individuals, however, make a consistent living day trading. Day trading can become very risky, especially if one has poor discipline, risk or money management. The common use of buying on margin, using borrowed funds, amplifies gains and losses, such that substantial losses or gains can occur in a very short period of time. In addition, brokers usually allow bigger margins for day traders. Because of the high risk of margin use, and of other day trading practices, a day trader will often have to exit a losing position very quickly, in order to prevent a greater, unacceptable loss, or even a disastrous loss, much larger than his original investment, or even larger than his total assets. Even when a position has made a profit, the trader has to offset the transaction costs and the interest on the margin. It is commonly stated that 80 to 90 percent of day traders lose money. Types of orders. There are several different types of orders you can place when buying or selling a stock. The following briefly describes the more frequently used orders. Market orders. Limit orders. Stop loss orders. Fill or kill orders. Market orders. This is an order to buy or sell a specific number of shares at the best price available at the time the order is routed to the trading floor. Since market orders are normally executed immediately at the current market price after they have been routed to the relevant exchange, these orders are almost always filled within a very short period of time. However, because a market order cannot specify a price for the shares, the actual price at which the order will be filled will be unknown until the order is executed. Consequently, if the market price of the shares is rising quickly, a market order may be filled at a higher price than that quoted at the time the order was sent to the customer's broker for execution. Accordingly, if one wishes to buy or sell shares at definite price, a market order should not be used. Limit orders. Unlike market orders, a limit order permits you to specify the lowest or highest price at which you will sell or buy a specified number of shares. A limit order guarantees the price at which you will be filled, but it does not guarantee you an immediate execution, or whether your order will be filled at all. There are two main reasons for this. First, if you place a limit order to buy a stock at 50 rupees and the current market price is 60 rupees, you will not be filled until the price drops to 50 rupees or less, which may never happen. Secondly, market orders take priority over limit orders. Consequently, even if you place a limit order to buy a specific stock at the current market asking price, you may not get an immediate fill if there are numerous unfilled market orders ahead of your limit order. In fact, you may not get filled at all if, after the outstanding market orders are filled, the price of the stock goes higher, above your limit price. Stop loss order. A stop loss order is an order to sell a stock at a price below the current market price. Suppose that you have just bought 1,000 shares of XYZ at Rs. 50. You decide that you only want to risk Rs. 5 per share on this transaction. Accordingly, you immediately place a stop loss order at 45 rupees. This means that if the price of XYZ should drop to 45 rupees, your broker will sell your 1,000 shares at a market price of or close to Rs. 45. The use of a stop loss order will therefore pre determine the maximum loss a trader will incur. Fill or kill orders. An order to buy or sell a specified number of shares that is routed to the trading floor for immediate execution. If the order cannot be immediately filled, it is cancelled, killed, automatically. 
Note that the order must be filled in its entirety. Partial fills are not allowed. Day trading strategies. Certain stocks are ideal candidates for day trading. A typical day trader looks for two things in a stock, liquidity and volatility. Liquidity allows you to enter and exit a stock at a good price, i.e. tight spreads and low slippage. Volatility is simply a measure of the expected daily price range. The range in which a day trader operates. More volatility means greater profit or loss. Once you know what kind of stocks you are looking for, you need to learn how to identify possible entry points. There are three tools you can use to do this. Intraday candlestick charts. Candles provide a raw analysis of price action. Level 2 quotes, ECN. Level 2 and ECN provide a look at orders as they happen. Real-time news service, news moves stocks. This tells you when news comes out. We will look at the intraday candlestick charts and focus on the following three factors. Candlestick patterns, engulfings and dojis. Technical analysis, trend lines and triangles. Volume, increasing or decreasing volume. Scalping is one of the most popular strategies, and it involves selling almost immediately after a trade becomes profitable. Here the price target is obviously just after profitability is attained. Fading involves shorting stocks after rapid moves upwards. This is based on the assumption that 1. They are overbought. 2. Early buyers are ready to begin taking profits and 3. Existing buyers may be scared out. Although risky, this strategy can be extremely rewarding. Here the price target is when buyers begin stepping in again. Daily pivot strategy involves profiting from a stock's daily volatility. This is done by attempting to buy at the low of the day LOD, and sell at the high of the day HOD. Here the price target is simply at the next sign of a reversal, using the same patterns as above. Momentum strategy involves trading on news releases or finding strong trending moves supported by high volume. One type of momentum trader will buy on news releases and ride a trend until it exhibits signs of reversal. The other type will fade the price surge. Here the price target is when volume begins to decrease and bearish candles start appearing. Short sale, an advanced trading strategy. A market transaction in which an investor sells borrowed securities in anticipation of a price decline and is required to return an equal number of shares at some point in the future. In other words, a short sale is generally the sale of a stock you do not own, or that you will borrow for delivery. Short sellers believe the price of the stock will fall, or are seeking to hedge against potential price volatility in securities that they own. If the price of the stock drops, short sellers buy the stock at the lower price and make a profit. If the price of the stock rises, short sellers will incur a loss. Short selling is used for many purposes, including to profit from an expected downward price movement, to provide liquidity in response to unanticipated buyer demand, or to hedge the risk of a long position in the same security or a related security. An investor believes that there will be a decline in the stock price of company X. Company X is trading at $60 a share, so the investor borrows shares of company X stock at $60 a share and immediately sells them in a short sale. Later, Company X's stock price declines to $40 a share, and the investor buys shares back in the open market to replace the borrowed shares. Since the price is lower, the investor profits on the difference, in this case $20 a share, minus transaction costs such as commissions and fees. However, if the price goes up from the original price, the investor loses money. Unlike a traditional long position, when risk is limited to the amount invested, shorting a stock leaves an investor open to the possibility of unlimited losses, since a stock can theoretically keep rising indefinitely. When you sell short, your brokerage firm loans you the stock. The stock you borrow comes from either the firm's own inventory, the margin account of other brokerage firm clients, or another lender. As with buying stock on margin, your brokerage firm will charge you interest on the loan, and you are subject to the margin rules. If the stock you borrow pays a dividend, you must pay the dividend to the person or firm making the loan. Although the vast majority of short sales are legal, abusive short sale practices are illegal. 
it is prohibited for any person to engage in a series of transactions in order to create actual or apparent active trading in a security or to depress the price of a security for the purpose of inducing the purchase or sale of the security by others. Thus, short sales effected to manipulate the price of a stock are prohibited. Clearing and Settlement Process in Indian Stock Markets. Stock exchange is an entity which facilitates dealing in securities. Dealing in stock exchanges is done through registered members, also called brokers, who transact business primarily on behalf of their clients or investors. For those who are actively involved in stock market trading, it's always advisable to know the processes involved in it. Clearing and settlement activity constitutes the core part of equity trade life cycles. After any equity deal is confirmed, when equities are obliged to change hands, the broker who is involved in the transaction issues a contract note to the investor which has all the information about the transactions in detail, at the end of the trade day. In response to the contract note issued by broker, the investor now has to settle his obligation by either paying money, if his transaction is a buy transaction, or deliver the shares, if it is a sell transaction. Clearing House is an entity of the stock exchange through which settlement of equities happens. The details of all transactions performed by the brokers are made available to the clearing house by the stock exchange. The clearing house gives an obligation report to brokers and custodians who are required to settle their money, securities obligations with the specified deadlines, failing which they are required to pay penalties. This obligation report serves as statement of mutual contentment. Settlement cycle is the period for which equities are traded in exchange. For Indian Stock Exchange NSE, the cycle starts on Wednesday and ends on the following Tuesday, and for BSE the cycle starts on Monday and ends on Friday. At the end of this settlement cycle period, the obligations of each broker are calculated and the brokers then settle their respective obligations according to the guidelines, laws and regulations institutionalized by the clearing agency. Pay-in is a process whereby a stock broker and custodian, in case of institutional deals, brings in money and or securities to the clearing house. This forms the first phase of the settlement activity. Payout is a process where clearing house pays money or delivers securities to the brokers and custodians. This is the second phase of the settlement activity. The whole set of money transaction is performed by a bank in the stock exchange premises. Exchange appoints this bank to handle the money part of the transaction. Thank you. Revise and get ready for the next.